call them Michaelis Minton systems, um, the, the model works quite well. So let's dive into a derivation. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. I'm going to, we'll do it in class, but I want to hit the highlights. So again, kinetic description of the ES model, forward re reverse rates for the formation of ES complex, uh, K2 or K cat, the destruction of the ES complex for the formation of product. Here's a, how we can define that reaction velocity uh, in terms of that K cat and the ES complex. Um, we also make some assumptions here, as I've already mentioned. In this case, we'll make a steady state assumption. So the forward rate, that is, uh, the formation of ES complex and the reverse rate, that is, there's two ways to destroy the ES complex non-productively by K minus 1 or productively by K2. Each of those two processes, formation and breakdown of the ES complex, are happening at the same t rate. That is, we are in a steady state. ES concentration is not changing drastically over the course of our experiment. Also, let me point out, too, that um, we can have a, we have a kinetic definition of KM, and this is important, right? So the KM is really the ratio again of that uh, breakdown K minus one and K two, and the formation of the ES complex. Important to point out here that a lot of what we do in in our sort of kinetic analysis has to do with assuming that certain certain things are true that K cat is rate limiting, that K minus one is slow, blah, blah, blah. We'll see various ways of, of, re, of, of thinking about kinetics that way. And so it's important to remember uh, how we start in terms of our definition of Km. Also, we can define it in terms of equilibrium concentrations, of course, too. Um, more derivation, and this is all the same kind of thing we've already seen. Substitutions, right? Uh, collection of terms, blah, blah, blah. We'll get to practice your algebra on your own. The, the key for us, though, is that ultimately we get down to an expression like this, which says that the reaction velocity is proportional to the forward rate constant times the total enzyme concentration times uh, this substrate over substrate plus the Km. And at Vmax, then, uh, we can say that the rate is equal to, the so enzyme is saturated, so in the E total is the whole comp complement of, of enzyme there. Um, there's no free enzyme, that is to say. Vmax equals K2 times E2, that we can substitute Vmax into this expression, and then we get our michaelis menten equation, so Vmax times S over S plus Km. And again, pointing out that we capture all of the key elements of our rectangular hyperbolic initial velocity data this way. So practice that, and your book does a nice job of describing how to derive it as well. But let me just remind you that we start with this phenomenological model and a definition of the rate and, a, and the assumption that rates are forming, that ES is forming and breaking down at the same time, at the same, with the same rate. Now, let's think about significance of this model. And again, here's that, that, that standard little data graph that I'm showing you. And there's two ends of the spectrum that we can think of in terms of the significance of the michaelis menten model, and we make some assumptions in order to get at those two ends. First of all, at large substrate concentrations, that is, substrate concentration is much greater than Km, right, which is going to be the v naught at half max, right? At sub great substrate concentrations, we see that um, Ks is much, much greater than Km, so Km is relatively insignificant. We can forget about it. And then the reaction rate goes only as K2 or K cat, right? So that the K, this becomes the turnover number. That is to say how, how quickly we're turning over substrate into product. And we don't have to worry about the formation and breakdown. Okay, that's one end. The other end is when substrate concentrations are very, very low, much lower than Km. Then the opposite becomes true. And we have to think about, so substrate concentration becomes very small, but we see that that uh, the, our formation and breakdown rates are still important, right? And and uh, and then what the important kinetic parameter becomes K cat over Km, right? Well, that determines the overall rate of the reaction. 
let's take a break from enzyme kinetic definitions for a second to think about the serum proteases, which we've talked about uh, quite extensively and will continue to do so. Um, I believe we're looking at chymotrips in here. It's a protease. It cleaves peptide bonds. Here we've highlighted the peptide bond in red for the, carbon, the carbonyl, in, uh, uh, blue for the amide nitrogen. And we add water across that bond, and we have this carboxyl end and the amino end. So we have our hydrolyzed peptide there. Um, it's useful to think about kinetics when we're, and the point here is that we can use the kinetics to understand reaction mechanisms, right? We, under, we, we seek to understand exactly how enzymes do their job. We do that via kinetic analysis. So let's look again at the catalytic triad of the serine proteases. Remember, ASP, HIS, SER, right? It's the presence of the aspartic acid that positions and activates, right? Maybe makes maybe makes the histidine more basic because of this strong hydrogen bond. This guy is is more prone and properly oriented for abstraction of the hydrogen of the proton from the serine hydroxyl, and then serine can become activated. So here's that abstraction, and there's our there's our our activated nucleophile. But if we look at the data from the article that I had you that I had you read for this week, we'll see that we can look at the log of the rate reaction, I'm sorry, log of the KCATs, um, the turnover numbers, for the different constructs that you could imagine do, studying in this system. The wild type, which of course has the, an, an, intact, an intact catalytic triad. And then again, the power of molecular biology means that we can manipulate that active site substituting alanines or glycines or what have you for the uh, catalytic triad components. And what we see is that when we, when we take away either the ser or his, we lose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven orders of magnitude in terms of the rate constant. When we take away the aspartic acid, maybe less important, maybe only five orders of magnitude, maybe only 10,000 times slower than the wild type, but here still much, much slower. So removal of any of these catalytic residues uh, disrupts the, the activity of the enzyme, but we can say with some certainty that we could never do anything with this serine if it wasn't for a histidine that was properly po positioned for the abstraction of that, uh, that proton. Let me also point out that the destroyed active site, triple mutant, is still a thousandfold faster than the uncatalyzed reaction, so that would be a that would be a rate acceleration of ten to the third, right? Still, non-trivial rate acceleration um, uh, over the over the uncatalyzed reaction. What does that tell you? Well, chew on it and then come to class ready to talk about it. Uh, blah blah blah. Right? Okay. Why is this here? I can't remember. Okay, yeah, so there's KCAT, right? K2 there, remember. Uh, we construct our kinetics experiment in such a way that the number that we measure is the number that we care about. So here we're t we care about the overall reaction rate, the KCAT. So let's think about KCAT over KM and what KCAT over KM can tell us. Remember, in this case, what we'd be measuring is the Km derived from the initial velocity data and the Kcat, right, that turnover number. Well, what we can see is that uh, under certain conditions, K1 can, can place an upper limit, the, that is the formation of the ES complex, can place an upper limit on the reaction rates. So here is where we make some of those simplifying uh, assumptions or def or the we careful about how we define our experimental system assuming that kcat is much much greater than k1 that is to say kcat is not the rate limiting step um, but much slower in fact than k1 and if we also assume there that k1 is slow okay so the disassembly of the es complex is slow then you can you can do the math here but basically what we see is kcat goes away right I'm sorry, K minus 1 goes away, and K cat goes to 1, and then K1, the formation of the ES complex, dominates our K, K cat over Km. So think, think that through uh, with those simplifying assumptions. But what does this mean, then, that 
kcat over km under these conditions can tell us something about exactly how how fast an enzyme is going. Chymotrypsin, 2.5 times 10 to the fifth, right? That's pretty fast. Uh, think about what our units are. I'll let, uh, we'll work on this in class as well, but I'd like you to try to think through how we get these limits, these units on kcat over km. The point is that at some point you reach a kcat over km, right, or effectively a k1 or formation rate constant. That is diffusion limited. That is to say, you can't do, you can't form a productive complex any faster than you are. So every time uh, substrate encounters protein, you form ES complex. That's simply a diffusion limited upper speed limit on the reaction rate. K cat over KM can also be a measure of substrate specificity. Um, so again, we make some simplifying assumptions. We say that substrate concentration is very low, very much lower than KM. And then we see that uh, E is effectively E total. So that is to say we're not occupying, we're not forming a, v, um, a very significant amount of the ES complex. All of the enzyme effectively is free. And then formation of the ES complex dominates. So K cat over KM in this case can tell us how well substrate binds. Again, I think it's valuable for you to look at uh, what happens to the Michaelis-Menten equation under these conditions, but let's just look at some of the values. So here I hope you can see that I've, I've given you f four possible substrate side chains. Um, this is for chymotrypsin again. Um, we see that if our side chain is a glycine, if we've got this uh, three carbon chain, four carbon chain phenyl ring, what do we favor? In the, if, if these are in the proper substrate uh, position. Well, we see that K cat over KM is slow, faster, 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 and that tells us that in this case, K cat over KM tells us how, that we prefer to have uh, this phenyl ring as our, as our substrate. 